we continue with the sensing car from last time and implement a way for it to get damaged like this. We'll implement collision detection by checking for segment intersections between all edges of the car and the road borders. This method will work with all possible orientations, and it will even work with other shapes as well, but I'll leave you to experiment with that on your own. It's best if you code along with me, so open your project, and if you want to have this exact version I'm using, then get it from GitHub, and you're set on a collision course with knowledge. Get it? Collision? Because we're... No, no, no! Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. There's a good news and bad news. Good news is that I'm going to teach you how to detect collisions using the segment intersection code from previously. The bad news is that the way that we draw the car here by rotating the context, we actually don't know where the corners of the car are, like what are their coordinates, and we're going to need to figure those out first. So in car.js, I'm going to create here a new method and I will call this private method create polygon. This polygon will have a list of points, an array of points, so one point per corner of the car. And great news is that you can add more points, you can have different shapes, and this method I'm going to teach you is going to work. So. If you look at this car right here, um, let me refresh so that it points upwards, and then we can use this distance right here as a radius. Like, uh, it's pretty much the same distance no matter which of the corners we are looking at. And the other thing that we will need to figure out is this angle. Like, what is this angle knowing the width and the height? So, this radius is actually very easy to get using the hypot method here. So this is the hypotenuse of the triangle with width and height, and I'm dividing it by two because I just need half of it. And the angle here is a little bit more tricky, maybe. So the tangent of this angle is actually the width divided by the height. So we can use the arctangent method, this atan2 method from the math library, to give us the angle knowing the width and the height, like this. And I don't need to divide these by two because that angle is the same no matter how you look at it. Now, with these, I can add my first point here. The x is going to be the center x of the car, minus the sine of this car angle minus this alpha value. So I'm combining here uh, the alpha angle and the car angle as well. And I'm multiplying these by the radius. And the same thing goes with y, but here I'm using the cosine, like this. So this was the top right point, and we need to do the next ones as well. So here let's just add alpha like this. The next point I'm going to keep minus alpha there but add here math pi plus or uh, 180 degrees. And the last one I will copy this one from here and change this alpha to a plus, like so. And now we just return the points, and that's it. We want to update this after we move the car, like this. So this car will have a polygon attribute that will be generated in 
this way. And to draw the car, we can now use this polygon instead. So instead of this trick here where we translate, rotate, and then just draw a rectangle here, essentially losing the corner points, we can remove all of this and just draw our polygon points in order. I'll show you. We do begin path, move to the first point in the polygon like this, and now loop through all remaining points. So notice that I'm starting here at one because I already moved to the first one previously. And here I'm just going to line to the ith polygons x and y like so. And I'm going to fill, save the file, refresh the page and nothing happens. <laughs> so everything still works, but in a different way, in a better way. I'll show you. If we go up here, for example, and just change one of these points, let's change this one by multiplying this radius by three, then our car will look like that. <laughs> it's kind of kind of funny. So we couldn't do this previously. And, and now we can do crazy things like this, like give complex shapes to our car. And we can, of course, add more points if we want but I'm not going to do that. It's your job to experiment. What I will do is teach how to do the intersection between this car polygon and this line segment on the right and detect if the car is damaged or not. So let's go up here and say this damaged is equal to false. All cars are not damaged to begin with. And then here, after we have our polygon, I'm going to assess damage, a method that we're gonna need to write with the road borders. So now here, let's define this assess damage method given some road borders like so, and loop through all the borders and check if there is an intersection between this polygon and the road border of i, the i road border, then we return true. If the code reaches here, we return false. Now we need to implement this polys intersect function here. And it will be a really useful utility function that takes two polygons here as parameters. Now, notice here that this road borders of I is actually not a polygon, it's a line segment, but it will be general enough for it to work. So let's go now to utils.js and I'm going to define our polys intersect method with poly1 and poly2 like so. We loop through all of the points in poly1 and for each of them we check all the points in poly2 and we are going to see if they touch or not using our get intersection function from up here. So we say here poly1 of i and poly1 of i plus 1 modulo the length. So this may look tricky, but all the things that I'm doing here is I'm taking one point in the first polygon and then the next point in the first polygon. So I'm making segments essentially from one point after the other, but at the end, this will give an error when we are reaching i is equal to poly1 length minus 1 because adding 1 to that then it will go over the array. But if we use here the modulo operator like this, then that value will become 0. 
And that's actually great because the last point in the polygon needs to connect to the first point in the polygon, like point zero. So this code solves two things. And I will continue and put the same thing for poly2 uh, with J this time. So essentially, I'm taking all the segments that make the first polygon and comparing them against every segment of the other polygon. And if there is a touch, then I'm going to return true. Otherwise, if all of those checks have returned null, then I will return here false. So our polys don't intersect. Now to see if this works, I'm going to go back to my car JS here. And actually in the draw method, the first thing that I will do is see if this is a damaged car. I'm going to set the fill style to gray color. Otherwise, I will set the fill style to a black color like this. Saving, refresh, and it changes color. And it changes color immediately when the car touches the border, even with this complicated shape because we are using each segment forming this polygon and comparing it with the border of the road. Now, this method is quite general and um, it works for complicated polygons as well, but it can become slow if you have very many points. So then you would need to do some optimization here, maybe look at the bounding boxes first or, or something like that. And it's really reliable as long as your object doesn't move too quickly, for example. Like if our car would move so fast that it could actually jump over a border or over another car in traffic, then you would need a different collision detection strategy for that. But we won't let that happen. And um, if I zoom in here a lot, I should mention this because you may wonder why the car doesn't detect a collision now. And the reason for that is that, well, that line, that border of the road, it's a line, it's a mathematical line, which actually has no thickness. And here we are drawing it with a relatively thick thickness. And that's why it looks like it's intersecting, even though it's not. You could fix this if you want by drawing the borders of the road with actual very thin, infinitely long rectangles, but I'm not gonna do something like that. This is great for our purpose. Let me zoom back out. Change this car to be a rectangle again. I don't want to keep it in this crazy shape. And now in the update method, I will not allow it to move if it's damaged. So I'm going to say here, if not damaged, then do all these things. Sensor, maybe it's good to be like that. So the sensor will still work even if the car is damaged. Let's see if this has any consequences. And if I refresh now, the car is a rectangle again. And if I go to the side of the road, everything stops. So now I can play with the arrow keys. Nothing happens, my car is useless. We really want to take any kind of impact seriously in this. So I am rendering the car useless at this stage. There are many ways to implement collisions, some more general than others, some easier to code than others, some more efficient than others. There is no single method that is the absolute best in all cases. So many libraries come with a bunch of different implementations. Both Box2D and 3JS have collision detection support. Check those out if interested. Were you able to follow along? Then great. Please like this video if you learned something today and share it with others so they can learn as well. And if you got stuck somewhere, comment below and I'll try to help. You can get today's code from GitHub and the full code is actually already on my website. Check it out if you can't wait till the end of the course. See you guys.